In this video, I'm gonna show you what a team wiki is, why you might need one, and how simple it is to set up. I think this is an incredible way for you and your team to stay organized and to save a lot of time in the long run. Whether you're a small startup or you work at a massive organization, corporate job, this is gonna come in handy. So what is a team wiki? Essentially, it's just a collection of your team meeting notes, resources, links, or any other information that you wanna store in one place so that it's easy to find every single time. It could be as simple as a short Google page with a list of links or an advanced Notion setup. The point is that it doesn't really matter what tool you're setting up here. It's more about the principles and how you go about setting it up. I think this is increasingly important as we live in a world where we're all pretty much working remote. We're often working asynchronously, which means there's situations you can't always rely on people for information if they're offline, and rather you can start to entrust a simple system where you know all the information is up to date and always going to be there. Working digitally also means that so much of our world and our workflow is online. So it becomes harder and harder as we add more tools, AI, and more team members to keep track of where everything is. So a wiki can serve as a sort of table of contents or a guide, especially for new team members to get up and running really quickly. Now you can use pretty much any tool to set this up. I'm gonna show an example in Google Docs as well as a Notion setup. And I'll link both of these as free templates down below just to get you started. But the point is the principles I'm walking you through can pretty much be applied to any tool. So don't be discouraged if you feel like you can't use Notion or you wanna use a specific tool you're really proficient in. I think it's more important that you feel comfortable with a system that you trust and that you know can grow with you and your team. So I've tried to simplify this down to three principles. The first is that your system needs to be very, very simple. Don't make it fancy, don't try and overcomplicate it. It can grow with you and your team over time and you can get to an advanced setup but ultimately you're trying to solve a problem here of a lack of a single source of truth. So start by just putting your most important information here and then go from there. Secondly, it needs to be very easy to capture and organize. You're gonna be adding notes and links constantly almost every day or throughout the week. So you don't wanna go through a bunch of hoops just to keep your information up to date. The whole point here is that it's a single source of truth and if that's not up to date, then people start to distrust the system and ultimately they'll stop using it altogether. Lastly, it should be simple and easy to use for your team. If you're watching this video, you're probably gonna be the one setting all this up and I commend you for your efforts, but you don't wanna get something that just works for you. You might have users or team members who don't really know Notion or don't know whatever tool it is you're using and you don't want that to be a barrier for them to use it. So again, start simple, make sure it's good for everyone and it's a system that can scale. So let's jump into a couple of examples. I've created a simple Google Doc here just to show you that you don't need to pay for a fancy tool. You don't need to have a lot of knowledge. Pretty much everyone knows how to use Google Docs. And so this is a really simple template to show you what I mean. For pretty much any wiki that I've set up, I always start with a start here section. So this usually includes things like the team values, how we work. It can also include an onboarding checklist for new team members but also for the existing members on your team, this might be a new system for them, so you wanna walk them through those same steps when they're first getting started. It can also include other things like the tools you use, maybe you can link to your Slack channels, your team calendar, uh, any kind of links, team contacts, policies, and any other documents that you wanna link from here. Now, obviously this is just a bunch of text, but Google Drive does a great job with connecting with other tools, and you could put other videos, PowerPoint presentations, whatever you need, you can embed in here or even just provide a simple link. So not everything has to be done in the same document. It can also just be a hub where you find the link you need and then it can go to whatever tool that is. Not everything is gonna work in here. Sometimes you need a Google Sheet or a, or a presentation so you can link to that from here. You don't try and feel like you need to recreate everything in one place. You also notice by using headings, we get this simple outline on the left and just in case I have a table of contents at the top, so there's kind of no excuse to being able to find what you need quickly. After the start here section, I would recommend following something really simple. The para method has worked great for me and my team, which includes projects, areas, resources, and then anything inactive from those three sections, which is grouped in archives. So with projects, this could be, again, a simple tracker that links to certain files. It could also link out to a separate tool if you need to, if you work in something like Jira or Notion or anything like that. But basically, you're just trying to create a tracker and an overview of where to find things. And it's really important that this information is up to date. You're always going in here and updating the statuses or if links are moving around, 
you wanna make sure it's up to date so people can trust it. Again, that's why starting small and simple is really the best way to go. And projects are usually very action oriented and have some deadline in mind. Even if you haven't committed to a deadline, it's usually something that's not gonna last forever. And it has a lot of actionable items like tasks and stuff like that underneath it. So that's how I consider projects. And then areas are more categories of responsibility. So you might have finance, marketing, design, you could put HR, pretty much anything that isn't a dedicated project it might just be more department oriented. That's where you're gonna put the information there. And then resources can just be a collection of links, tools. Again, you could put your calendar and all that kind of stuff in here. And then archives, like I said, is gonna be anything inactive from those three places. That's another really practical part of building a wiki is you don't wanna bloat it with information, especially if that information becomes out of date. So probably the most likely thing to go in here first would be your projects, because hopefully you're completing your tasks and you're finishing and hitting those deadlines. So once something's finished, you wanna move it down into the archives so that you're always putting the most up-to-date stuff and what you're actually working on at the top. Next, let's take a look at a Notion setup. Now, the beauty of Notion, if you're not too familiar, is that it can really be as simple or as complex as you want. There is tons and tons of functionality in here, and sometimes that can actually be overwhelming for people. So again, you can just start with this template or create something similar, and then as you learn the tool, you can add more advanced features down the road. Another great part about Notion is that there are hundreds, if not thousands of templates, and almost all of them are free, especially on the Notion uh, community page, that you could pull anything from a handbook to project trackers. Almost anything you need is gonna be in Notion. So you don't always have to be creating these things from scratch, and sometimes that's a great way to learn the tool. So, so for example, I just grabbed this employee handbook template, which is actually made by Notion, and they have tons of pages in here, all kind of pre-built with this template structure. So it's super simple to fill out. Uh, you've got stuff like vacation policy, and you could put other things like tables and calendar, all of that guidance you can put in one place. So stuff like this is all available for free. You don't have to build it from scratch, which is great. So essentially the template I put together is just a collection of other templates just to get you started. Uh, the next big thing you'd probably use is projects and tasks. Uh, this is a really, really capable template that Notion has. You can track things like projects, tasks, subtasks. Uh, you can add tons of metadata like the tags, priority, assignees, and then you can pretty much group all of that information in as many ways as you want. For example, you could go by different uh, projects. We have different areas like product launch, research. You could also go by team member, and they do also integrate with charts. I'm on a secondary Notion plan right now, that's why I don't have it here. But there's tons of different capabilities you can mess around with. There's also a product roadmap in here, which you can view in a timeline view. Uh, there's some resources and assets. So if you're collecting tons of YouTube videos, articles, podcasts, stuff like that, you can keep all of that in one place. Um, there's also some team contacts. This is awesome as your team starts to expand when you don't really know everyone and you can kind of start to uh, categorized by the, your point of contacts and your experts. So whoever is the go-to person for design and the go-to for HR, you can put that all in here and it's super simple to add. I also just wanna reiterate that I've seen some incredibly, incredibly advanced setups in Notion and you can certainly go that route if that's solving a real use case for you. But I wanted to start really simple because I think a lot of people get overwhelmed with Notion or they get really excited and then after six months or so, they end up switching to something else like Apple Notes or whatever. And again, the point is you could do this whole thing in Apple Notes or a Google Doc or whatever workspace that makes sense to you. And that's why it's more about the principles and working really simply. And then you can start to expand over time. So hopefully these principles and the templates that I walked you through give you a sense of what you're trying to do here with a team wiki. The ultimate goal of this is to buy back time for your team. Whether it's you going in here or everyone on your team going in here and adding to it, eventually it's gonna save you time in the long term because you're saving yourself jumping into meetings or constantly being pulled into a direct message to answer a quick question that could probably be solved with something like this. Another way of looking at it is that you're essentially cloning yourself in a digital form so that if you or one of your team members leaves the company or moves on to another team, the whole system doesn't collapse because all of that documentation and those processes are there 
and they can continue to work in a system that they're already familiar with and they're not all relying on one person. So that's it for this video. Again, the templates are down below to get you started and be sure to drop a comment with how you're currently documenting your process or which tool you're planning on using next. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.